Element 8, Physical and Psychological Health Hazards and Risk Control. 1. Explain the following terms in relation to noise exposure at work. A. Noise-induced hearing loss. B. Tinnitus. A. Noise-induced hearing loss. Noise-induced hearing loss is normally caused by prolonged exposure to high noise levels, causing damage to the hair cells and leading to a permanent threshold shift at particular frequencies, which worsens with continued exposure both in terms of the extent of the threshold shift and of the frequencies affected. B. Tinnitus. Tinnitus on the other hand is typified by a ringing or similar sound in the ears caused by overstimulation of the hair cells. It can be acute or chronic, permanent or intermittent. 2. Identify four limitations of personnel hearing protection as a means of protecting against the effects of noise or identify the factors that are likely to affect the performance of personnel hearing protection. Earmuffs. Uncomfortable when worn for a long time. Must be routinely inspected, cleaned and maintained. Efficiency may be by long hair, spectacles or earrings. Incompatible with some other items worn, for example spectacles. Needs dedicated storage facility. Earplug. Difficult to see when fitted, so supervision and enforcement difficult. Risk of infection if dirty or if cross-contaminated when inserted. Interface with communication. Effectiveness decreases with usage need to be correctly sized to fit the individual. 3. Outline four types of engineering control that may be used to reduce noise in the workplace giving an example of each. Source. Eliminating or reducing noise at the design stage for example nylon bearings instead of metal. Substitute the source. Change the noise source for something else that does the same job but generates less noise. For example change a petrol driven machine for an electric version. Silencing. An attachment is fitted to the exhaust of the machine the baffles reduce the noise. Damping. Reduction in structure borne noise by use of rubber, cork, springs etc. in noise path for example panels, motors etc. or by reducing vibration. Isolation. Protection of persons from noise source by distance or soundproofed rooms. Lagging. On pipes carrying steam or hot muds insulation of pipes to reduce sound transmission. Absorption. Absorbing sound in the work area by means of acoustic absorbent panels on walls or ceilings. Enclosure. Placing a soundproof cover over the noise source. 4. In relation to ill health effects from the use of vibrating handheld tools identify the typical symptoms that might be shown by affected individuals. Hand arm vibrating syndrome, HAVS. Vibration white finger, VWF. Nerve damage. Muscle weakening. Joint damage. 5. Outline the control measures that may be used to minimize the risk of health effects caused by using the vibrating handheld tools. Reduce the vibration at source. Substitute the source. Changing work techniques. Periodical maintenance. Interrupt the pathway from source to receiver. Isolation of vibrating parts. Limit the duration of exposure. Job rotation. 6. For each of the following types of non-ionizing radiation, identify a source and state the possible ill health effects on exposed individuals. A. Infrared radiation. B. Ultraviolet radiation. A. Infrared radiation. Red hot steel in a rolling mill, fire or furnaces and glass manufacture. B. Ultraviolet radiation. Welding operations, sun. 8. Identify the general methods for protecting people against exposure to non-ionizing radiation. Shielding. Increasing the distance between source and person. Reducing the duration of exposure. Appropriate personal protective equipment. The use of barrier cream. By following safe system work, permit to work system. 
change the competent person often to reduce the impact. 9. Outline the factors that may lead to unacceptable levels of occupational stress amongst worker. Excessive demands of the job in terms of workload, speed of work and deadlines. Frequent changes in the working pattern, for example changing shift patterns. Exposure to noise and vibration. Extremes of temperature and or humidity. Cramped conditions. Dirty or untidy working conditions. Workplace layout resulting in a lack of privacy or security. Poor lighting. Problems with glare. Inadequate ventilation resulting in stale air. Inadequate welfare facilities. Those working outside, inclement weather conditions.